Hello. Hi. <laughs> so exciting to see you here. Yeah, great to have you here today. Joel with Deaf Nation Live. Huh? So honored today to have, if you will. Yeah, my name is Ashley, and this is my name sign. Ashley, okay. And we are, we are known as Signing with a Heart. Right. That's right. The poetry and expanding on it. I really have really enjoyed watching your work and your, your signing. Uh, I'll show a short clip of actually who Ashley is. Mom, Dad. <laughs> Phew, safe area. Uh, I, I'm I'm so honored to have you here today. Uh, tell me a little bit about your background and why signing with a heart uh, is. How did you come up with this idea? Well, to be honest, I it really is a long story, but I'll try to keep it short. It just happened to be that I was on Instagram. Uh, scrolling through one day and I saw I looked up the hashtag American Sign Language just because I was curious what I might find and I saw so many hearing people teaching sign language and there were a lot of pictures involved um, in their instructions and I saw too that people some people weren't posting anymore but there were a lot of comments and hearing people were saying they wanted to learn and they had questions about sign language but no one was answering so that really got to me and I decided, you know, I really appreciate that these people are wanting to make the effort to learn sign language. And so I decided to put together an agenda and get going with uh, teaching some signs. And that's where, because it touched my heart to see people's wanting to learn, that's where the sign came from. Oh, signed with heart. So. Signed with heart, my heart, your heart. I mean, how does how does that said? How is it spoken? Well, this is the sign, and I use this because I was touched by the effort that people wanted to make, the hearing people wanted to make to learn sign language. But a lot of people actually sign more in English. They say sign with heart, but this is the actual sign. Yeah, it just feels like you're really sharing a part of yourself. So great. That's right. All right. Well, you have to have heart. You have to have passion. But how do you, I mean, you can't pass your heart along, you know? So uh, it really is nice to have that, you know, building of the bridges, right? The hearing world, the deaf world, these two worlds coming together and becoming one. And, you know, because we all live on one planet. That's right. So your family, everybody's hearing you're the only deaf person. That's right. I'm the only deaf person in my family. Wow. I'm really looking forward to have this conversation with you and how, how you've got to where you are. Let me be uh, right back after this ad. Don't go away. All right, so I'm a student, right? A, 
Am I a good student? <laughs> That's great. So that uh, clip that you have right there is from the very beginning. I decided to start with the alphabet because that is so important and one of the most basic things you can learn. You really need to know your alphabet. If you're meeting people, then everyone wants to learn their alphabet. That's foundational to learning sign language. So I felt like teaching those ABCs right there in the beginning was very important. So fingerspelling is the first thing people learn. That's really important for communication. Yeah. So even before the alphabet, I mean, how did you become, you know, savvy about teaching? Uh, are you a teacher or is your background in education? It is not. I have no background in education other than the fact that I was born deaf. I was raised mainstream in a mainstream school. And I did, you know, associate with other deaf kids. And so that was my experience growing up and that's something that I can share with others since sign language is my language and you know English is my first language but so is sign language so that is how I decided to start teaching you know I really treat uh, teaching sign language online like I would teach a friend all right our next clip tell me about this is this in a drawer or something <laughs> It is. So that was my first personal post on Instagram. I was home for Thanksgiving and looking for some clothes and rummaging through drawers. And it really touched me to see these sign language resources in my home because that was from my parents learning sign language when they learned that I was deaf. So they're using signing naturally here. You can see the VHS finger spelling wow. tape. And, uh, you know, my parents can sign. They struggle a little bit still with finger spelling. But, um, yeah, that's why I feel like finger spelling is so important. But I was touched. That, and I'm very thankful that my parents so made that effort. So that inspired you? Absolutely. I wanted to use my platform on Instagram uh, to reach out to other hearing parents, to encourage them to learn sign language, to communicate with their children. Because I can't imagine not communicating with my parents. I'm very thankful that they did learn how to sign and how to communicate with me. So I'm very thankful for that. And uh, it's touching that they took that effort. So this was the first post that I shared with others. Uh, and the whole reason was because I wanted to use my platform to help other people and to help hearing parents. Wow. I mean, this being your first post, and I mean, did you expect that this would become a thing, right? This is uh, to inspire connecting a bridge between deaf children and hearing parents to where you are today and the evolution. Really, this post was done at Thanksgiving. So two months prior to that, I had already started teaching some basic signs, but this was a personal post that I had made. Um, rather than just teaching, you know, in front of the camera. So I had thought more at that time how I could share more of my personal life uh, on my platform. So I interviewed my parents and asked about their experience of what it was like to learn that you had a deaf child and how did you decide to learn sign language. And they had things they wish they had known. So they shared their journey with other hearing parents who have a deaf child. So that photo really was the beginning of me making my platform more personal and showing that it was a journey of growth for me. Um, you know, and starting with teaching some basic sign language and then growing through that. And through my platform, I have been able to connect with hearing parents, and that's been significant. So this, this is like a treasure chest, you know? That's how I say it. You open it up. It's not filled with gold, but filled with beautiful language, and that's your picture there. Which then leads me to the next one. Food. What's up with food? <laughs> well, you know, so I did think about ways to include more, sign more signs with signing with heart. I tended to stand in front of the camera to teach signs. But I, as I became more personal, I wanted to show real life experiences. Real life. I like that. Right. So this was a real life experience I thought about. I thought, you know, I can go ahead and just record myself as I'm progressing through everyday life. And part of that was cooking dinner. So here I was making enchiladas one night. So I taught the sign for enchilada. But 
oftentimes people will fingerspell different foods. So that's a good chance to practice fingerspelling. And again, this was more of me incorporating more personal life into that teaching and learning process. It made it more fun. Well, and, and food is fun, right? It's always exciting to learn. And at the same time, you know, eat, learn. I mean, that's pretty fascinating. Enchilada is not an easy one to to, to, to to learn, you know. So you've got to see it. You have to have somebody spell it again, you know, over and over. That's right. And, you know, at that time, I wasn't focusing too much on finger spelling, but just thinking about everyday personal life and what was going on. Now that five years have passed since that time, I really feel it's important to work on spelling at a normal pace and then repeating it, possibly slower if someone needs it, like this. And then maybe the third time, even going a little bit slower for beginners, I always encourage people to really look, if it's a very long word, look at every third letter. <laughs> and so that's a way to practice reading fingerspelling and practice fingerspelling through enjoyable activities. So as you're signing, I mean, there's no audio. And I'm sure people are, are wondering, well, the show here today, we have live interpreting. We have voicing interpreters for us um, being provided by ZVRS and Purple. So I'd like to thank them. And yes. so that kind of applies here. Finger spelling, uh, but people will say, well, why is the sound off? Uh, do you ever get that comment? Always. <laughs> Always. People are asking, why is there no sound? You don't have any music on this video. And I just tell them, I don't listen to music. I, I you would have to hear to appreciate the music. So um, I tell people, no, there is no sound. And one reason I continue to mute my videos is because, you know, sometimes when signing, there is that sub-vocalizing that happens. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about, but uh, deaf people realize that we do make noises with our voice when we're signing. So I don't yeah. want, I know that that would be out there. I know I'm making noise. And so uh, I would, if I can't hear myself, then I don't want anyone else to hear me either. So I keep my videos completely muted. Well, and truly, it's shifting somebody's way of thinking, right? Don't look for a voice. Look at the hands. Look at the motion. Exactly. That's right. That's great. So I have a word for you. This is I know you love to practice. I've got a word for you. Ready? I'm going to give it to you. <laughs> okay. I'm All right. ready for it. Etaz. Etaz? A-T-O-Z. It's a new word. It's a new word. Really, A T O Z, A T O Z. What does that mean? <laughs> oh, see, it's an old deaf joke. It's supposed to be instead of A to Z, you'd say A T O Z, A T A to Z. Oh my gosh! Ah. Really? <laughs> <laughs> now, now you, you know, you test your students. I'm testing you. Okay, perfect. Next clip here. All right. Oh, I love this one. This one is exciting, right? Air travel. I know. I love air travel. So tell me about this. What's this L? So this here was my first post of another person that I had just met who knew some basic signs. And the story behind this is I was flying home. And when this flight attendant learned that I was deaf, she came and sat near me and brought me, um, you know, the safety guide that explained all of the safety features. And she did this, she spelled, I am Lisa, L-I-S-A. And I gave her thumbs up because I was so happy that she had made an effort to communicate with me. And so when we landed, I asked her if she would mind if I took a quick video of her that I could share on my platform. And she was happy to let me do that. She said, you know, I only know some finger spelling, but you can do that. And a lot of deaf people were very touched at the fact that this flight attendant had made the effort to learn some signs. So that was the first post that I made of others that I met out in public. And since then, I have posted many more. Uh, as I go to the store or a restaurant, as I'm traveling, I meet hearing people who are service providers who know some signs, and I will take a video of them. And I encourage others to, as they watch my video, see they don't have to be a perfect signer. Just use what you know and make an effort, and that can make a deaf person's day. Absolutely. Even if it is A, 
finger spelling to that super fluent deaf person. You know what I mean? There's no right or wrong sign, really. You know, I've got a phone here. Let me let me grab this. So, uh, you know, somebody saying L, you know, and then teaching them this and adding a food, adding more people, the human interaction. Right. It was a process of adding various ideas on my platform as time went on. And more people were seeing these types of videos. They were really moved to go ahead and learn for themselves. And a lot of people ask me for more stories, more personal um, kind of perspectives on things. Of, And they're happy to know, you know, a little bit of sign language. And they say, you know, I ran into a deaf person and it was really nice that I knew how to fingerspell to them. So agree. I mean, hearing people are very naive. They're happy to try. They they want to learn new. And, you know, sometimes it's a simple sign. Sometimes it's learning a simple phrase in Spanish. Very similar in concept. All right, this next picture. Oh, again, another one. Looks like there's an interaction and now you're in a, in a store. How did this come to be? Right. Uh, so, again, it just happened that I was in the store ordering at Panera Bread. And after I had completed my order, the cashier, I had a hearing friend with me, by the way, and the, the cashier said, how do you sign have a good day? And my hearing friend was there, so I asked them to go ahead and film this interaction. And so the cashier signed have a good day. And again, it was just a meaningful moment, and I want to see more hearing people out in the workplace, in service industries like restaurants, to learn some basic signs because it makes such a big difference. Yeah, and you know when when you teach somebody to have a good day, I'm sure you feel you know inspired. You know, and and to them they feel like the customer is always right, but you know the customer is giving me back something as well. You know, so That's when right. you post something like this, I wonder what's the result. You know, uh, is there a lot of thank yous? Did they give you any food? <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it depends, but I always see that they're very excited that they've learned something new and they feel inspired. You know, some people have said, I was so scared to meet a deaf person and I was scared to sign before this. So hopefully it inspires others uh, so that when they see a deaf person again, they'll remember this and be ready to, to attempt to communicate. That'd be great. There'll be a long line, and then all of a sudden it's just going to pass down to the end where the last deaf person will be like, "Oh, yeah, it, it, it'll, it'll pass the inspiration on. We'll 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 defeat all barriers." <laughs> all right, uh, keep going, keep going, keep going. What's this? Keep going. That's right. So this was uh, something a video I had posted about working on some self improvement and bettering my own life. So that was the point of this post. And it's an area of my life that I was working on. I'm thankful that the people who watched my video have said, you know, they've learned every day for the past five or six years. And so I constantly am thinking of ways that I can give them more. Um, and often they're telling me, you know, I'm so grateful. I would have never been able to communicate with a deaf person without this. So people are having opportunities open, but I'm seeing them invest their time in learning, and I'm thankful for that. So I'm looking for ways to add more value to the time they spend on my platform. And because of that, I've added some kind of positive inspirational messages and self-improvement messages. I'll add those in every once in a while, and I'll post something kind of positive and inspirational about someone's personal journey or goals they may be setting for themselves. You know, life is hard for all of us and everyone goes through different obstacles and challenges that need to be overcome. So I use my platform to just encourage others in their life. And also again, keeping my platform personal, I want to be real with them and encourage others on their journey. Yeah, I mean, it's just important to get, you know, engaged, right? And getting that engagement, creating a relationship with your audience. I know sometimes you've got a hearing audience, and you've got a deaf audience, and they've got different views. But at the end of the day, the sign language is the same. 
So in Instagram, I know you're you're big Instagram, a little bit on on Facebook, but all of those are are are, are growing. I mean, is it tough to think about what's next? You know, what's my what's my post tomorrow, the day after, and it's never done, and you just gotta keep on going. <laughs> what's the secret? It is tough. It's tough. My secret, God helps me through everything. Um, God really gives me help. I don't plan too much ahead. I didn't even really plan for this live interview. So I will actually, after this interview, I will be thinking about what I will post tomorrow. I really post on the fly. I would like to plan ahead, but uh, it's something I personally will need to work on. Uh, I typically will just do things last minute, one day at a time, and that's how I've operated yeah. for five and a half years now, one day at a time. Um, I have no real, I had no I, no idea or no plan in place. That's my oh. secret. <laughs> oh, what was the secret? Oh, oh, I got you. Got you. Right. Just to not give up. I think that my secret is just to keep going day by day and not to give up. Hence the picture. I love it. All right. C, the letter C. Coach? Is this for coaching? <laughs> Actually, yes. I mean, you got it. It is. Hey, what Coach was involved here. <laughs> funny. It actually made me think of today for Coach. Um, this was my first course, my first online course, two years ago. So I made my first course that focused solely on fingerspelling, on the alphabet only, no signs. And the reason I focus on fingerspelling is because I've noticed many hearing people really struggle with fingerspelling. Um, they don't always memorize the entire alphabet and are able to use it. So I would ask, what is P? What's the sign for P? And people have to think through the whole alphabet yeah. to get there. So also receptive um, skills from hearing people tend to be weak. So I really wanted to build on that finger spelling foundation so that we could go from there. So the first course I ever did was on finger spelling and I am the coach. I am the, uh, I'm a teacher, but I also call myself a coach. Yeah. And a coach kind of gives you a little flexibility. You know, you can go from right. uh, cat, you can go real quick, you know, C-A-T, cat, and then you can teach the sign. I mean, it's a real quick receptive test. You know what I mean? Right. So in this first course, I focused only on the alphabet. And in the second course, which will be released this year, I focus more on words, two or three letter words. From there, we will advance to four and five letter words and go from there. By step. Right. It's important to start with that foundation of the alphabet. All right. So your next picture I love this one. I, I love this one. I, I will turn it over to you, but I know you always involve people, but then you've also included your, your, your father and people see, boy, your hearing father communicating with a deaf daughter shows proof to other hearing people how important communication is. So this water running concept. <laughs> right. This is my dad. We were hiking. And as we were hiking along the trail, Dad looked at me and said, I can hear a stream over in that direction. And we couldn't see it, but he could hear it. And I had honestly never even thought about it because if I didn't see it, I wasn't even thinking about the sound. So that was the first post that my dad was in where he signed about some sounds that he heard in the environment. And so when we go to the beach, my dad will say, you know, I hear the waves. I can hear this and that, and he will let me know the different sounds that he can hear. And then he will show me in sign language kind of what the, what these sounds sound like. So before, I just thought there was one sound for the beach, but my dad explaining the specific nuances of sound helped me really understand it because he was showing it to me visually. So I began sharing that on my platform. So when I can see movement now, I really think about the sounds that my dad has described to me. And I never realized before that that all of these movements had different sounds. <laughs> Interesting. So what do you remember? I remember the first time I used hearing aids, I was in seventh grade. And it was 
a little bit odd uh, because I had been resistant to wearing hearing aids. I knew I didn't like how they felt. Oh, no, eek. I (laughs) did not like them. But I decided to go ahead and do that. Um, There was a tissue box, and my nose was a little bit runny, so I grabbed a tissue. And I had my hearing aids in, and I grabbed another tissue, and I grabbed another tissue. And I had this pile of unused tissues because I kept pulling out tissues going, wait, this makes sound? I never knew that pulling out a tissue from a box would make a sound, so it was pretty funny. Um, it's just an, it was an interesting experience to realize that literally everything has a noise attached to it. And so this video shows my dad explaining that, uh, this was also one of the first new posts that my dad was in. And since then, you'll notice my dad has been in a lot of my Instagram posts. People enjoy seeing my dad in the videos and since, and my dad enjoys participating. So since that's popular, I include him, and it's really fun. Uh, this journey would be very difficult to do alone. Honestly, though, I've never been alone. Uh, but it's nice to have some other support as well. And my dad is one of my biggest supporters. My entire family are just fantastic supporters. So it's yeah. been nice to have him. I know there are a lot of people who follow you, right? They, they support you. But even you know behind the scenes, you know, where – the, the hard work, right, where the 98% of the work, the planning, the thinking, the editing, what to do, and then once you, you know, put it out there, you get that immediate support. But, so, is your father involved in your, you know, Instagram uh, engagement, and, and have, you, have you noticed an increase in engagement because of your father's involvement? I have, actually. Uh, I, you know, it, it hasn't all been perfect. My Whenever I was born, my parents started learning some sign language. And at that time, my dad was 31 years old. So, of course, he did not become fluent, but we communicate well. And he communicates everything to me, whether he's fingerspelling, if it's a sign he doesn't know, or if he's signing. And then I use my voice around my family because I did go through years of speech therapy and, and audiology and using hearing aids. So I've had a, it hasn't been perfect, but I've always had a good relationship with my dad. And I, my dad is a good example of, you don't have to be a perfect ASL fluent signer. You don't have to be perfect. The point is communicating. You know, and I've noticed so many hearing people worry yeah. about being perfect and being super fast and fluent. The point is communication. Use what you know and keep learning. And that is how you learn sign language. Just keep going and it does not have to be perfect. I repeat that over and over again to people who follow me. Don't expect perfection. Just do your best and try every day. Not only that, but it makes it so much more human, right? Pulling a parent, your father having him involved, showing you being happy and father being excited and that excitement that happy it just it comes across in very effective conversations all right next picture (laughs) do you need help (laughs) so why is this important so really all along since the beginning my goal was to teach just basic signs to especially help hearing and deaf people communicate And the best way to do that is just start with some basic signs. And that's still my goal today. I have the same goal I did today as I did when I started. So we keep the lessons pretty basic. And I tell people, if you're in the workplace, if you're in a service industry and a deaf person comes into your store, you can ask, do you need help? What are you looking for? And just knowing those few basic phrases and having them ready I tell people you don't have to know a lot. And when someone asks you, do you know sign language, you can respond slowly that you're learning. And again, I just want to let people know they can learn some very basic phrases. They don't have to know the language inside and out. So we focus on basic phrases because my goal is for people who watch my videos to become proficient with a few basic critical phrases. Because that's the foundation for communication. And then if people want to learn more, they can go take an ASL class and get more deep into the language. 
And that's so good. I mean, just that basic, right? And if you want more, go to ASL. One, two, you know, and then you're, you're, you're going to quick up, quickly pick up, you know. It's that uh, more than any, you, you don't lose that time. That's right. There are many people who watch my videos who have told me they take a sign language class. And they've told me that when they start their ASL 1 class, they're way ahead of the curve because they've already learned from watching my channel. What a, what a result, huh? Mm -hmm. Next picture. Oh, right I again. love that. <laughs> What's up with this? Uh, I, I see in here, it looks like a map. Uh, is this Spain? It is. We were in Spain. And that was not too long ago. That was back in December. A friend of mine, we traveled all over the globe and went to Europe. And this was our first big trip my first big trip without my parents, without my family. So I just went with friends and it was very exciting to travel with them. I've always, always wanted to travel. So we went to a mutual, we met up with a mutual friend who we knew was in Spain. And here in this picture, we had a deaf guide and it was such a great experience. The deaf guide used international sign language. Yes, international. Okay. Oh, it was a fantastic experience. Because, you know, even though that guy didn't know a lot of ASL and we didn't know a lot of international sign language, we could still understand each other. And I loved that connection through sign language and through gesturing. It, I just enjoyed that experience because... Through that journey, and we went to Israel, and we had a guide there who I had, and let the interpreter make a correction here, I had gone to Israel with my family, and my mom interpreted for the tour guide. This new experience was completely different because we had a deaf guide guiding us along the way. So that picture, we are in Spain, and that is the very center of that country. It is the dead center of Spain. And that's the picture you see there. Interesting. And I'm sure, you know, as they don't use ASL and they use gesture, and they would point the same, you know, middle, right? Using that basic gesture. Right. Or sign, right? It doesn't matter if it's ASL or if it is international. It's the middle of Spain. Exactly. And it was so clear. It is clear. So then you come back home, and you've been uh, using international language. Uh, did were you able to share any of the little clips that you've learned, or any tips? I haven't, not at this point. <laughs> but I do want to learn more personally. But that trip was so inspiring. It in inspires me to want to work harder to earn more, so that I can travel and meet deaf people around the world. It was just a great experience. And I look forward to doing that more. Of course, now with the pandemic, yes. I'm staying home. <laughs> I'm ready for the countries to open up again so I can travel. All right, ma'am, time has flied, huh? but we'll be right back. All right, so we're almost out of time from book work to setting up plans to the very, you know, production. What is the, the most important tip to the community, both hearing and deaf, as they've, you know, gone, as, as you've gone through your experience, what is the most significant impact and at the same time establishing a business? What would be your tip? I would say, again, you don't have to be perfect. It's so important to communicate. 
that is the key. And it'll work out from there. That's great. So your ultimate goal, you've been working really hard up until this point. The number of likes, people, that's not the point. This work that you've been doing, what, what do you expect to, to ultimately accomplish? I do want to create more courses that will really show an improvement in my teaching and plan better. You know, I've been doing this on the fly, like we just talked about, but I want to produce more prepared courses that will give people more confidence in learning their basics. Um, and so that's my goal with Signed with Heart, is to make a plan for the future. And again, I want to stick to my goal for hearing people who watch my videos to become proficient in just basic communications and conversations. Uh, what a great goal. Not right, not wrong, not perfect, just signing, right? Just something That's... that matches the, the, the feel, the heart. Wow. Wow. I have really appreciated your time, you sharing your experience with us. I want to thank Purple and Z for providing us with voices. Yes, thank so you. Nice thank you for having me. Yeah. Thank you for watching Def Nation Live. <laughs>